Father, we just thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to come into this house and worship you freely in our country, Father. For so many are not able to do that, Father. Help us to not forget the freedom that we have and not take it for granted, Lord. And we just thank you for the families that are here today, that you will just help us all to have ears to hear what you're saying to us individually. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we're going to start in Genesis 1-1. Let's open our Bibles. We're going to take a walk through the Word today. We're going to read the whole thing. How about that? You know I'm kidding, right? Because we'd be here all night. But let's start in Genesis 1-1. We can go with whatever version. Let's all read it out loud. In the beginning, God prepared, formed, fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. Period. Stay right there. This was not just a day that he created the earth and the sky. We look at that and we think, oh yeah, the heavens is just like the sky up there and the earth is what we walk on. This was a day of creation, the heavens and the earth. It was more than just what we see with our natural eyes. How many of you in here know there's more than just one dimension in this world? There's more than two, there's more than six, there's more, there's more than we can even fathom. The heavens is a term used in the Bible for the spiritual world that actually exists outside of our normal, everyday, three-dimensional, what we see with our own eyes. God created a multi-dimensional universe. How many of you know that? How many of you know what dimensions or what dimensions are? A lot of us have learned that in school. Now, we can only see three dimensions, most of us, of the physical space and time, and we assume that that's all that exists because that's what we're used to seeing on a regular basis. But spiritual dimensions consist of many more dimensions of reality beyond what we can see. Now, most of us know what a line is. That's one-dimensional. One-dimensional. Whenever you have, well, I'll just use this paper instead of going to get the other. This is considered two-dimensional, two sides. It's considered a plane or two sides. Then you have this incredible box over here, which is considered three-dimensional because you have lines, you have planes, and they have depth. You have three dimensions here. Doesn't everyone see that? Making sense so far. I'm going to be doing a little bit of reading here to try to help keep us intact with what's going on. Can I tell you, this is what we see every day. There is an existence outside the box, folks. And we need to get out of the box. And that's what we're talking about today. Getting out of the box. There is a website, and some of you can feel free to jot this down. It's on www.godandscience.org. Godandscience.org. And I'm going to read this directly from what they wrote because it's just absolutely amazing to me. It's called The Extra Dimensional Nature of God by Rich Deem. There is much evidence from both the Bible and from science that demonstrates that God must exist and operate in dimensions of space and time other than those to which we're confined to. God could not have created the universe if he were just a part of it. The Bible says, and we can turn to 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27, that God could have not created the universe if he was only part of it. The Bible says the universe cannot contain him. If the universe does not contain God, he's outside of what he has created. Amen? Makes sense so far? Yep. Everybody awake. Everybody out there. Yeah. Don't make me start calling on you now because I get you real woke up quick. 
The God of the Bible is invisible and cannot be seen except if he reveals himself to us in a three-dimensional form that we can see. Can I say that again? The God of the Bible is invisible and he cannot be seen unless he reveals himself to us in the three-dimensional realm that we see. That's why he had to come in the form of Jesus, Jesus, man, here on earth. A being which exists in dimensions beyond our three spatial dimensions would be invisible to creatures or to us that can only exist in the confines of our universe. Let's look at Colossians 1.15. Colossians 1.15. This board is really hard to erase these things. They don't always come off. Now, he is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the invis or the visible representation of the invisible. Who are they talking about? Jesus. Let's see that again. He, Jesus, is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. He is the firstborn of all creation. And there's many, many, many scriptures that go into this. I mean, Hebrews 11, 27 talks about him who is unseen. So we know God is invisible only because he is not a three-dimensional realm being. He is outside of those dimensions. This is cool. This is my favorite part here. This right here, we are going to call Mr. Flat. Everybody see Mr. Flat? We're going to put some dots in there because he's made up of just, you know, he's a square, but he's also got stuff in there. Who are we going to call this over here, Melanie? Mrs. Flat. Because they are flat. They're on this plane. And we're going to pretend that this page or this screen, this board here, is a part of the universe. And Mr. and Mrs. Flat are a part of that. Now, this is the Flat family. Everybody say hi to the Flat, flat family. Hello, Flat family. Now, they're confined to this plane of this page. And they can only move within this plane. They can neither see or interact with any part of the third dimension or three-dimensional world. Whenever Mr. Flat looks at Mrs. Flat, what does he see? He sees a line. He cannot see what's inside Mrs. Flat because he's not in the third dimensional part of it. He's only in the plane of that one dimension. So when he looks at her, he just sees this line. Does that make sense? Everyone with me so far? Same thing with Mrs. Flat. When she looks at Mr. Flat, all she sees is that line. And we can move her all around here, and all she's going to see is the line. She will never see what's on the inside of those beings, or of each other. However, we are observers of the third dimensional realm. We can look at this and we can see inside Mrs. Flat and Mr. Flat and we can see that there's something there because we're not in that dimension. We're in another dimension. Just like God is in another dimension, he can see us in our three-dimensional world and can see things we don't see. Got it? Very cool. Now, Mrs. Flat would like to have a moment to herself. So Mrs. Flat decided she's going to go inside of her little box. Can Mr. Flat see Mrs. Flat anymore? No, because she's in a box. She's allowed these walls here. So Mr. Flat just sees the box. He doesn't see Mrs. Flat. However, 
we are able to see her because her walls do not extend into the third dimension of our universe. Likewise, and this is key, an extra dimensional God can see us at all times, no matter if we're trying to hide from him or not. Amen. How can he hear all of our prayers? and know everything that's going on the inside of us and know what's going on inside of you and you and you because he's a different dimension. He's a multi-dimensional God. He sees it all. He doesn't just see what we see. Right? A God who is, who is not extra-dimensional would not be able to observe anything. That's what sets our God apart from all other gods. He is omnipresent, omnipotent, all-seeing, all-knowing. Now, I'm going to try something a little bit different here. I'm going to show you how we are as Christians and our understanding. Yeah, this board is not going to really be the greatest in the world here for that. Hopefully I can... We need a different marker here, folks. We're going to try to do this down here. See if I can draw it. This is going to be fun. Okay, here's a plane. Not like an airplane, folks. I see them here, my nephew's over there. And we have Mrs. Flat, Mr. Flat. And we're going to have Mr. Level. woo -hoo! I don't know who he is, but there he is. So, Mrs. Flat, Mr. Flat, and Mr. Level. They are on their own dimension. This is a different dimension, right? Now, say this cube, because it's a, in a different dimension than that, decides it wants to reveal itself to Mrs. Flat. And all of a sudden... It creeps in to Mrs. Flat's world and taps it. And she says, oh, I see a point. That's all she sees. Then here's Mr. Flat. Here's a line. Mr. Flat says, oh, I see this. It's a line. Then comes Mr. Level. Mr. Level sees this other dimensional thing as a plane. Now, it's the same box, it's the same dimension, just like we have the same God, but we each see a different part of him whenever he interacts with us. We only see in bits and parts. What is that in Corinthians 13? All right, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. We look now as in a mirror, dimly, but then we shall see face to face. We see him dimly now. We only see bits and pieces of him now. But then we get together. Say we decide we're going to talk about this God that has interacted with us. And I start sharing with Pastor Bob, oh, you know, I saw his, I saw the point. And that's the way I see God is that point. And he says, well, I see him as the line. And Spencer says, well, I see him as this plane. And we're all like, we're talking about the same God but different aspects. We have a three-part God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is three in one. And what did he create us in? His image. We are also triune beings. We're not just flesh walking around here. We've got a human spirit living on the inside of us. We are created in his image. Now, with this being said, do we see things and people with the multi-dimensional God spirit that's been put on the inside of us? Are we looking at each other with that inspiration of the Holy Spirit knowing each other by the Spirit? That multi-dimensional God that created us? Or are we looking at each other with eyes 
of the flesh because we think what they're doing is wrong or, what, or they need to be fixed by us because we see it in our three-dimensional way. We need to see each other by the Spirit in that multi-dimensional God that's on the inside. Amen. Amen? Have we lost our faith in God and his multi-dimensional ability to handle things, to take care of the things that we think are wrong? Do we really believe God can take care of it? Do we believe that prayer changes things, folks? Yeah. How many of us are in here praying? You have a list of people that you're crying out to God for. We need to know that prayer changes things because when we commune with Him and we bring someone's name to the Father, He hears it. He hears it. We are communicating with Him. And he will not forget. He is not a forgetful God. Especially if he's in this other dimension that can see everything just as clear as a bell. How could he forget? He created us. Amen. Phil, would you mind sliding this back over when you get a second, hon? Folks, the Pharisees looked at Jesus as a person that needed correction. Who does he think he is? They focused on him. Because he was taking away all of their glory and all of their notice, you know, their, their little thing they had going. It was so sad. Jesus didn't do everything the way that the Pharisees thought that they should do, that he should do. He was led by the multi dimensional God that knows all and sees all. I don't know about you, but if. I want to be led by the God of all, the all-seeing, all-knowing God that sees it. I want to be led by that. I don't want to be led with these. Take them out of my head, for God's sake. Amen. This will get you in trouble every time. The flesh is never satisfied. The flesh is never satisfied. And I've said it a million times. Flesh is flesh. I don't care whose body it's on. And I'm telling you, we can think we're all pious and we've got it all together, but guess what? Take a look in the mirror. There is nobody without sin in this place unless they have been set free by God Almighty because of what Jesus did on the cross. That's how we are sinful, are sinless in the sinful world. Amen? Amen. And I'm so like, we need to to embrace that because it will change the way we think yeah. it will change the way we think about other people yeah. it will change the way we think about ourselves right. it will change everything if this right here what's that you call it stinking thinking if we can get our minds off of what we see and our spirits in tune with god Amen. and be led by him I don't know about you, but I refuse to be put in a box. So does God. Amen. God's not going to be put in a box either. He is far above, far beyond our petty little grievances. Yeah. Far beyond the pain we feel. Far beyond the desires we have, far beyond it all. This right here is all we know and see, yet this whole room is filled, filled. There are beings, spiritual beings that were created to inhabit this earth that are in this room right now that aren't even what we can see. Floyd's aunt, at one point, she, um, there was an aunt in his uh, ancestry who was an evangelist, and she said that if we could see how packed it in some of the spiritual world is in our atmosphere, we would just not even believe it, how much has been created. We are spirit beings. Pastor Bob shared that again last week. Here's a revelation. We do not have to understand 
why God leads us to do things that this minimal dimensional brain doesn't understand. Amen. We don't have to know, well, why God? Right. Well, do you really think that in, in our minds we're really going to conceive exactly why he's telling us to do something? Probably not. We don't need to explain ourselves to others. We need to be, we don't need to candy coat it. If God says do this, then you do it. Right. Don't question him. He may entitle, I mean, he may allow you to know at some point. Just obey. Like Susan, there is no other way. Just obey. No matter what opposition comes your way, obey him. And don't run off like Jonah. Don't go crazy and do your own thing. Just obey. We need to be driven by the Spirit of God. He put his multidimensional spirit on the inside of us so that we could be led by him not by our own fleshly desires and what we see with our own eyes. Folks, if we want to see revival, we're all saying we want to see revival, right? Who wants revival? Amen. All right? We need to move outside the box in our own little thing. We need to get our eyes on the Spirit of God and off of each other. We keep saying, oh, well, you know, God's going to bring in the, the flow. We're going to have all these people here, and they're going to lay all over the place and be healed like Azusa Street and all this. That's great. I'm looking for it. I know it's going to happen. But it's not going to happen until we get outside the box and we start flowing by the Spirit of God and we become one in unity and one in the Spirit. Amen. One in the Spirit, focusing on the same thing. Focusing on the same thing, which is doing His will. Amen? Are we willing, I mean, what are we willing to give up for, for revival to occur? What are you willing to give up for revival? I'm not just talking about the church getting filled up and people getting healed. I'm talking about your own life, my life. What am I willing to give up? Am I willing to give up my foul attitude, my anger because someone didn't do it the way I thought they should do it, my insecurities, my you name it. Am I willing to give that up the fleshly way and take on what God wants me to do? Am I willing to do that? How bad do we want revival? How bad do we want it in our own lives? In our own lives. Because you know what? God can bring an animal to speak to you if he had to. He could bring a child he can bring an adult. The very person that has wounded you in life, I've heard this before, if a pastor has wounded you, guess what? Nine chances out of ten, it's going to be a pastor that brings a healing. If it's a brother or sister or friend or father, whatever, it's more than likely going to be someone who is represented in that same realm to bring that healing forth, that acceptance, that love. Many of you know, like Pastor Bob is like a dad to you. And some of you have had a really difficult time with your fathers. And Pastor Bob has picked up that, and he's prayed for you, and he's been like a dad to you. He has stepped into that role, and has, God has used him to bring healing in your lives. How bad do we want to be revived? Do we want to be where we are right now, or do we want to step into another realm of freedom and love and acceptance? What's going to grow when you look at the spirit and the flesh? Whichever one you feed. If you want your fleshly nature to grow, keep talking trash. Keep filling up your whole life with the negative and bah humbug and oh, that person, this, blah, blah, blah. blah. And like in five minutes, you name ten things you don't like. You can, you can be that person if you want to be, but you're absorbing every demonic spirit on yourself, and you are never going to be set free until you decide you want to walk in the spirit realm. And some folks, and I've seen this, some folks, they have done this for so long because they have been treated that way. They've been treated that way by their family, people around them, life circumstances, and they are just down. Now, do we condemn that person because of that? No. Absolutely not. We encourage them. We pray for them. 
We don't let what they do or say get to us. We just embrace them and love them where they are because we're family. We're a part of the body of Christ. And one day, one day, they'll keep feeding their spirit. We'll keep praying for them. Keep, and next thing you know, they walk in here and they've got a smile on their face and you're like, wow, what happened? How's it going? And everyone starts gravitating towards you because they see the light. They want to know what's going on. They want to be around you. It's amazing. I've actually seen that transformation in people. It's just, it's just wow, awesome. So if we feel like we're struggling to see the multidimensional side of God or the multidimensional side of things in the spirit realm, we may simply just need prayer. Today, you may want to come up and say, I don't even want to tell you why I'm up here for prayer. Just pray for me. And you know what? We'll be internally seeking God for what to pray over you. We'll pray for you, get you set free, so that when you walk out of this place, you're not the same as when you came in. Remember, it's not only about what you are feeding yourself to grow, but what you're serving others. You can feed your flesh all day long, but guess what happens? Whatever you're eating, whatever's in your refrigerator, when company comes over and you open it, guess what? You're feeding them the same stuff. So whatever I'm eating, if it's of the spirit realm, and I open my refrigerator, and I'm offering it to those who come and dine with me, guess what you're going to be eating of? The fruits of the spirit, not the fruits of the flesh. So we have to be careful that we know what we're eating. First of all, know what you're eating, what's feeding you. And then you'll know what you're serving. So, what are you eating? Macaroni. Macaroni? You know that because you smelled it when you came here, right? Because you knew I put it in the oven right before I walked in here. Eddie knows that mac and cheese, that chicken in it. I put chicken in it this time, Willie. <laughs> That's right. And what do, you, what do you eat in the spirit that builds you up? Raise your hands and tell me what you can eat in the spirit that builds you up. Yes, sir. God's power, spending time in the presence of God, and allowing his power to touch you. That's right on. Who else? His word, staying in the word. All right, guys, we're feeding our spirit. What else are we going to do to feed our spirit? Prayer, oh, big one, prayer, praise and worship, praise and worship. Fellowship. fellowship with other believers. We know what to do. We know what to do to feed ourselves. You know why? Because everybody in here has been in that place where you needed to get fed. Amen? Amen? Hello, talking to the right crowd. So, what do we eat that won't build up our spirit man, but will build our flesh? What can we partake in that's going to feed this flesh? Don't get too graphic, adults. What can we partake in that will feed this flesh? Gossip. Gossip. Negative thinking. Negative thinking. Pride. 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 Negative. 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 Negative news. Always negative. Fear. That was a big one for me. Yes, sir? Pardon? Crime, getting involved in crime. Hate, anger. Pride. Murmuring. Murdering. Murmuring. Everybody go, ma, 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 ma. Ma, 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 ma. That's all grumbling and complaining. Sorry. I just had to do that. It's kind of funny. Ma, ma, ma. All right, so now we've decided what we want to eat, right? We really don't want to eat all that stuff we just said. We want to eat of the spirit realm. Well, I need two volunteers. And not everyone at once. Miranda, you're okay. You can bring the baby. That's fine. You and Scarlett can come up here and have a seat right here. Now, I need one more volunteer. Would you like to volunteer? You can come sit in the... Okay, you had your hand kind of halfway up, so go ahead, Josh. Come on over. Yep, you can come on over and sit in this chair. 
Welcome to my table. Now, first of all, I'm going to act like the server who has been building myself up in the spirit realm. I have got myself on cloud nine with God. I feel, am I doing everything right? No. Am I happy? Yes. Why am I happy? Because I know that by grace I am saved, not by my works. So, how about I decide I'm going to feed, hmm, should I feed you first? Or you want to be, oh, you want to be fed second? Oh, I don't know if you can handle it. All right, since Miranda's got the baby in her hand, and we're going to be all sweet and gentle to the baby, I am going to give you a piece of pizza. <laughs> because this will nourish you. You like that big old piece of pizza? Because everybody likes pizza. So she comes to see me, and I start praying for her. Miranda, Lord, we just thank you for her, for this beautiful baby, that you'll just bless them and keep them and nourish them and help them, Lord, to grow and to continue to know you and to grow in their relationship with you in Jesus' name. And then I come over here, and I pour her some, something to drink, and Oh, you're so wonderful. We love you. No matter what she's done, no matter how she is, we are embracing her, loving her, pouring out of what's inside of me into her and Scarlet. Okay, let's flip the switch. Sorry, you said second. Are you sure you're ready for this? Are you really sure? You guess. You trust me enough, right? Just a little, anyway. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? You look, you look really tired. Now, anything I say to you is just for the sake of the teaching. Don't take this personal. You look really tired. You know what? I'm, I'm not real sure. I mean, are you sure you're okay? I mean, you must have something going on with you. Are you sure you're all right? Okay. Hey. I have this wonderful thing I would like to serve you today. Here you go. This is my emoji poop. You know what? Did you know that that lady over there? Yeah, that, definitely. We should really talk about it more. I can tell you everything you want to know about her. Absol you know why? Because I have seen it, and I know. And you know what? Guess what? Let me tell you on this side. That way you don't get too, you know. That's right. That guy did that. Yeah. And then, here I am. And uh, y'all, please do not be offended by this. If you are, please forgive me. I love my poop. <laughs> But this is what we do sometimes, folks. Don't take it from me. This is mine. Some of us have been practicing this for so long that we don't know how to let go. Now, my brother, and he will probably watch this, my brother, when he was a little boy, his first real potty, he was so excited. He comes flying into the room. My aunt was there, my Aunt Jean, all these people, and they were like, I went poop in the potty. And they come flying in there. Oh, Daryl, that's wonderful. Good job. And he's like, thanks. And then they hit the button. No, it's mine, as it goes down the hole. That was his. He didn't want it going anywhere. At least that story is better than mine. My mother was blind, and when I learned how to potty, I decided that I wanted to show it to her, and so I came into the room and said, Mom, look, and put it in her hand. And she's like, her mom was there. She said, Mama, what'd she just put in my hand? Next thing you know, they're like, oh, man, Mickey, why did you do that? You know, so, yeah, I mean, we like to play with our, not really folks, but you know what I mean. Yeah. 
All right, you may have a seat before something goes crazy and awry. Thank you so much. Give him a hand. Now, if we're always delivering negative things to others, we're going to be labeled as negative people. And when you see a negative person, just look what they're carrying. They're not going to want to be around you because you stink. You're going to live a very lonely life, drive away your family, drive away your friends. Everyone that you thought was there will no longer be there. Have you ever heard of potty mouth? Well, that's what it is. That's all it is. Is that us? Are we potty mouths? Don't answer that question. Has it been so much a part of us that we would scream if that part of us was taken away? Like my brother was yelling. <laughs> or are we so focused on sharing our potties with others that we forget that we're really wiping it all over them? Do you want to serve this stuff to people? No, we don't even realize when we do it. Please forgive me if I have ever, ever come to any of you and spread negative of anyone or anything in your presence. That is not godly. That is not the way that God wants us to live. I'm going to hide this because I don't really want to keep looking at it. We need to know folks by the Spirit. But I can tell you one thing, you better know their flesh, too. You better know their flesh, too, because you can get sucked into something just because I, I, they say they're a Christian. You better know them by the Spirit. Let that multidimensional God that's been put on the inside of you help you to discern what is right. Amen? We want revival. We will create the atmosphere that we choose to live in. How is the atmosphere in your home? How is the atmosphere here? I think for the most part, we're pretty clear here. How is the atmosphere in your home? We create the atmosphere by what comes out of our mouths. Who wants more of God in our lives? You want more of Him? Who wants more of God flowing out of them when you go to serve others? You want pizza? Let's go to Galatians 5, verse 16, if I'm remembering correctly. I didn't have that in my notes. Galatians 5, 16. And this pretty much sums it up, folks. We've heard this message before, maybe not in this kind of a demonstration. But I say, walk and live. What's that next word? Habitually in the Holy Spirit. Responsive to. Responsive to what? The Holy Spirit. And controlled by the Holy Spirit. And guided by the Holy Spirit. Then, then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh of human nature without God. I want to encourage you. God sees you. He's not like Mr. and Mrs. Flat up here looking at the side of you and thinking, oh yeah, that person's great. He sees everything. He knows everything. And He loves us just the way we are. And He wants us to love each other just the way we are. And not be affected. I, I mean, amen not be affected let things just roll right off of us like, oh, okay you know just keep on moving if there's anyone in here i know pastor bob's got the mic I'm, if he wants to talk for a couple minutes but i i want at the end of the service if you need prayer if you need you may need deliverance you may need something broken over your life before you break into this freedom that i'm talking about we're here we'll pray for you but be encouraged and know God is on your side. 
And I don't know about you, but I want that multidimensional God on my side. Amen.